What's up everybody, No Kids are back here for a ton of new reviews. Let's get into, well, a ton of reviews for this next week or so, because I've already re reviewed four or five movies this week already, so let's get into four more that I've watched over the past 24 hours. <clears throat> Last night I had yet to watch a movie for yesterday, so I got a screener sent to me called The Home Wrecker, which is available July 7th on DVD and video on demand. This comes out from Uncorked Entertainment. And this is all about uh, the these two women who, who become friends. And the older woman uh, becomes obsessed with the younger woman. And uh, now will not let her leave the house. And we find we find out why. She she's a bit nuts. This movie is it's decent. It's decent. It's better than most of the uh, lower budget screeners that I get. There's some really good ones. There are some really good ones, but most of them are either from Wild Eye releasing, and they're very low budget, crappy ish. Uh, horror movies. This is more of a comedic horror film that has some comedy tones to it, but this really, this really has, this really has a higher budget feel to it, but it's still very, very low budget. Let's not kid ourselves here. You can tell that they wanted to keep the budget really, really low by cutting out a lot of the violence. And I can't blame them for that, but I'm, I'm going to get into one scene specifically that I am not going uh, to spoil a whole lot, but the acting is fine. You will know uh, the one actress is named Alex Esso. She was in Dr. Sleep, and she played Wendy Torrance in Dr. Sleep. I do not remember her playing Wendy Torrance, but I looked her up on IMDb. And sure enough, she played Wendy Torrance. I liked D Dr. Sleep fine. I don't get every everybody's thing of, it's not as good as The Shining. Well, no dip. It's not going to be as good as The Shining. It is The Shining. It's probably my favorite horror film ever. This movie is ridiculously short. It's only 73 minutes without the end credits. So, it's a movie where you know where it's going as soon as we get to a certain point. Let's get into that. Once it gets to a certain point, let, let's just say a guy is involved and that's just a given. But this movie uses this guy very rarely. And I like how they do it. I do like how they do that. He's not really an important part to the story until we get to the last third of the movie. Until we get to the last maybe... 20-ish minutes. Then we start going that way, but it's a movie where you know where it's going. You've seen movie like you've seen movies like this before. You've seen lots of movies like this. And an obsessed older woman is obsessing over a younger man and starts to take it out on and starts to take it out on uh, his now wife or girlfriend. Either one. Uh, that's been done many, many, many times. It's just when it's done so poorly, where they don't use it as much as they should, you, you could have had the guy be a more integral part to it. Now, the actors do a good job. Uh, I, th I think the other woman's name is Precious. The actor's name, sorry. The a actress's name is uh, Precious. She does a good job at be being crazy. And she can do comedy and horror really, really well. This is a... Uh, a performance where you know that th this was a bit, bit of more difficult performance. Now, I, I've never heard of this woman or seen this woman at all. But she's apparently done... Quite quite a bit of some bigger work. She's done. Uh, she she was in L.A. 
Confidential, Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor, Harbor, Pearl Harbor, April Shower, uh, and a few more lower budget things. And uh, she's even been in some Hallmark movies that I have not seen. But I will be watching it relatively soon. This is a movie that is one I'm going to recommend to you. But if you are not into the uh, ob obsessed woman or obsessed older woman movie, then this is not going to be for you. The main problem that I have with the movie is the ending. The guy comes in, but before the guy comes into the picture, the woman... Uh, is just so sick and tired of her. So sick and tired of uh, her former lover's friend, a uh, lady lover, and she decides to uh, do something pretty violent that did not feel necessary at all. It's, let's just say she cuts something out. And it's just so out of place in the movie that it makes no sense why it wasn't that violent for the rest of it. But then we get to an even more violent, well, not as violent, but pretty freaking violent. Let's just say a head smashing occurs. And it, these two violent scenes came out of nowhere. The violence is handled where you don't see anything at all. You don't see anything at all. You hear it happening for most of the movie, but then you actually see the aftermath of the cutting out scene and the uh, and the head smashing scene. That's my main problem with it. If it was not needed, you you were completely fine without that in there. But it's one I'm gonna recommend to you if you're interested. Homewrecker is a decent little indie comedic horror film, and I'm gonna give Homewrecker a C.